The New York World's Fair of 1939 and 1940, held in Flushing Meadows in the borough of Queens, is widely regarded as the most spectacular exposition ever held in the United States. I was too young to experience this event, but having attended the 1964-1965 World's Fair held on the same ground, I wanted to learn more and share what I could about the earlier event. The big challenge in assembling this presentation was in condensing the enormous amount of information about the fair into a short program. In this slideshow, we will talk about the stamps to include Cinderella stamps, as well as photographs and other memorabilia. By every measurement, size, cost, attendance, publicity, foreign government participation, the number of exhibitors, it outranked every previous international fair. With 45 million visitors during its first two seasons, the fair was the best attended event of the first half of the 20th century. Participation was unprecedented with close to 60 foreign nations, 33 states, and U.S. territories, and over a thousand exhibitors, among them some of the largest corporations in the United States. A massive promotional campaign was waged across the country and around the world, with hundreds of programs and events attracting widespread, widespread media coverage. This stamp was issued on April 1, 1939, 29 days before the opening of the fair. Physical construction of the fair began in the spring of 1936 with the enactment of legislation permitting the reclamation of over 1,200 acres of tidal swamp, chiefly occupied by a colossal city dump. 70 million cubic acres of meadow mat and refuse were moved and leveled, and marshland filled in advance of the construction of the fairgrounds a feat still considered one of the largest land reclamations undertaken in the eastern United States. This cover was produced by Ior Caches. Ior Caches were produced by the early first-day cover cache pioneer, Harry Ior, many with the artistic assistance of his sister, Travilla Ior. Harry was a chiropractor located in Indianapolis, Indiana. The first caches by Ior were five different varieties issued on the 25th of February, 1929. Early Ior caches of the period 1929 to 1933 are based on fine line drawings. Ior caches from 1934 to 1940 tend to to be black and white photos surrounded by a block of a single bright color. Harry Ior never married. He died February 16, 1940, before the completion of the famous American series of 1940. His sister Travilla completed this series and continued with the Ior brand of cachets. Travilla's last cachet for the Ior line was in 1951. Travilla died March 16, 1967. The forward-looking theme and significant government participation helped to persuade a host of American corporations, eager to introduce new products to the public, to lease space from the fair. Many of these exhibits proved to be powerful promotional tools and among the most popular attractions at the fair. Notable corporate exhibitions included the American Telephone and Telegraph Company, where long-distance phone calls could be placed for free, the Borden Company, which offered demonstrations of an electronically operated milking machine, the Westinghouse Company, featuring corporate mascots Electro and Sparco, a mechanical man and his dog, and General Motors' Futurama, which offered a bird's eye view of the world of the highways, cities, and suburbs of 1960, as imagined by industrial designer Norman Bel Geddes. 
President Franklin Delano Roosevelt opened the fair with a speech on the 150th anniversary of George Washington's inauguration as president. President Roosevelt's opening remarks and other grand opening events were captured and displayed on RCA televisions. It was the first television broadcast in the United States. World War II would begin four months after the opening of the fair. Here is a souvenir sheet of Cinderella stamps from the Nicklin Company. It includes 54 poster stamps officially licensed for the New York World's Fair of 1939, Incorporated. My copy of this sheet came all the way from Australia during a global pandemic. We will visit some of the individual stamps in this show. This stamp from the sheet and the postcard showcases the Trilon and Perisphere, two of the most famous images of the fair. The Trilon was a 700 foot tall spire that was connected to the Perisphere, a sphere with a diameter of 180 feet. The Perisphere housed a World of Tomorrow model city that could be viewed by visitors on a moving walkway. Sixty feet tall, the statue of George Washington in his inaugural robes stood proudly in Washington Square on Constitution Mall, between the Trilon and Perisphere and the Lagoon of Nations. The statue was placed so Washington faced the future, the Trilon and Perisphere. The George Washington statue at the 1939 World's Fair represents Washington as he was taking the oath of office 150 years previously. A new form of radio transmitting called FM was demonstrated to the public for the first time in the RCA building. The exhibit was lit with the new fluorescent lighting and a new invention called the facsimile or fax machine, which transmitted eight inch by 12 inch newspaper pages at a rate of 18 minutes per page. A television made from DuPont's new material, Lucite, was in the lobby. In a 3,000-seat theater with a cast of 250 members, Railroads on Parade reenacted the progress of rail transportation from the 1820s through 1939. The goal of Edward Hungerford was to briefly tell the story of the railroad through a series of stage presentations with narration and incidental music. The administration building was the first to open on the fairgrounds. The staff moved in in August of 1937 and began the task of preparing for a World's Fair. From Today at the Fair, the official daily program and news of the World's Fair. Mithrana continues to unveil the world of tomorrow for thousands of visitors daily who are truly having their eyes opened for the first time to the seeds being sown to create that better world of tomorrow. This symbolic work of art grace, graces the fair's administration building. From a description on the postcard, the music building is modern and functional in design, of fireproof construction, and is equipped with the latest stage mechanisms and appliances. The auditorium is egg-shaped without balconies or interior columns and thus affords perfect vision. The square end of the building, which rises to a height of 80 feet, houses a magnificent stage from which many impressive musical presentations will be given. Flags and signs all communicated the central theme of the world of tomorrow. The American Banknote Company issued poster stamps 
advertising Eaton's fine letter papers for the 1939 New York World's Fair. On the tiny surface of each stamp is permanently recorded some notable scene of New York City commemorating the eventful year of 1939. A set of ten different stamps were issued. Many of the engravings were more detailed than the postage stamps from around the world during the era. The fair closed on October the 27th, 1940, yielding its highest day of attendance with over 550,000 visitors. Overall attendance lagged far behind the 1939 season, and while profits in the 1940 season did exceed expenses, it was not sufficient to wipe out the debts incurred the previous year. When all outstanding financial matters were settled, bondholders only received 40 cents on each dollar invested. Demolition, which under an agreement with the Parks Department was to be carried out by the Fair Corporation, began the day after the gates of the 1940 Fair closed. The unwinding of the corporation and the dismantling of the fairground structure was overseen by Howard A. Flanagan. Asked whether he regretted this task, he told an interviewer, Isn't it better to let it die while it is still lovely than to let it stand on and become shabby? Over the next four years, an ever-dwindling staff managed matters re related to the resolution of fair business. The formal dissolution of the New York World's Fair occurred in March 1943, but the corporation continued to function through the fall of 1945. When lingering legal and financial affairs were quietly concluded by a staff of one, operating from a desk at the Office of the Manufacturer's Trust. In this slideshow, we talked about the stamps, to include Cinderella stamps, as well as photographs and other memorabilia from the 1939 New York World's Fair. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of future presentations. Thank you for watching the presentation.